wanted to invite the, the, the family back in on Facebook. It's a problem. Deliverance is not being taught in the churches. And that's a problem in itself. People go in, people say, you see the prayer of repentance, and that's it. They send you on your merry way, still possessed, just as possessed as before you came in. Send you on your merry way, still wanting. For everyone who's coming in on Facebook, I just restarted this. And um, what's happening is my green screen you can see now because I think the display is what is uh, stopping it. That's the thing that's happening. Many people get in, coming in the church, you pray for them, the, the prayer of repentance, they feel like they're no good. But what they don't tell you is that they are struggling. What do I mean they're struggling? They go home and what you just said sounds so great. They feel like that's it. They, you, you just got a miracle pill as a matter of fact. Because you were a total mess. Sleeping with 50 people last night and now tonight you went and the pastor just said, say the prayer of repentance and you think you're good. And then, but, and then you start living in, in hypocrisy and lies because you're still struggling with all that sexual sin, with stealing, with lying, whatever you were struggling with before. As a matter of fact, it just got worse. But you can't tell anyone because you're a Christian. And now you were supposed to be, no, you're not if you're a Christian, that's not supposed to be happening. Okay, thank you, woman of God. What if I tell you that Christians are right now, I'm just going to take the cover off. Whoever want to be offended, you know I'm not lying. If you want to be religious and lie, then it's up to you. I will not join you. Um, there's a lot of Christians that I can tell you 100% that are struggling even worse than sinners. And the reason why you're struggling more than sinners is because if you're living in sin, there's nothing to be conscious of. But when you don't want to do it, but you find yourself doing it over and over and over again, then all of a sudden it becomes hypocrisy because you go to church and you preach. Oh, there you go. And you're right. Yes, your thoughts, your very thoughts, as the woman of God says, can get you repossessed. But each possession stage, every time you're possessed, your latter stage is worse than before. Don't think it's like, oh, well, let's pick up where we left off. No. No, it's, there's no. Oh, yes, sir. I'll give you a call. But uh, when the scope is finished, sir, Rob, we're going to be going live on Zoom. So I'll see if I can end this early and see if I can call you, or if not today, tomorrow. That's me talking to my good friend, sir, Rob, for anybody who think I'm talking to myself <laughs> on Facebook and on Periscope. But I want to encourage you again. If you have given your life to God, yes. when spirit goes to dry places, is that back to hell? Not necessarily so, because hell is not yet. If you say maybe he is, then maybe. But mm. dry places simple meaning, all right, what does the word or the term dry places mean? It just simply means no place of habitation, no trees, no bodies, no animals. It's a dry place not because it's a desert. I can't see demons getting water to drink. It's a dry place because these spirits, to survive in this, in this place, in this realm, in the physical realm, they need, an ob they need something so they can live in. They need an object. They need a body. They need a plant. They need something. They need a building. They need to have something. So if they don't have it, that's the dry places. He's sending them away from anywhere, if, from, from a place they can do harm or function effectively, if that makes sense. So they're sending you away from the place you can do harm or function effectively. That's where the, the dry places are, so it is, I should say. So um, when they go, in other words, they go to a place where there is no habitation because if a demon gets habitation, there's no reason for it to come back to you. It's looking for a body. It's looking for somewhere it can, it can live. And if your body, and if it goes to a dry place, meaning there is no object, no person, no nothing that is available, it's going to go back. Okay, bye-bye. Yes. So I understand that. You need to understand that it's just one of them things that we need to understand. 
You see, that person is saying God is man-made because he or she does not know who God is. If you need a deliverance, it would be a total pleasure to actually get with you, man of God. Get my, my email. I'll get my, my uh, yeah, get my details. If someone can put it on the screen, or you can also look in my um, in my profile and you can find it. So I'm hoping that you guys understand what, what was being said. And sorry for everyone who's on Facebook. I'm not dis distracted. There's something happening here. Well, you know what? I respect that. Let me tell you why I respect that. There you go. There you go. It is looking for a temple to dwell in. And that's the reason why the dry places is ineffective for them. There is nothing they can use to carry out their duty in the earth. So it needs to leave that dry place and it needs to come searching for something, a temple, so it can dwell in. Right? But this man of God, I salute you. You might have said that publicly. I don't know if there's anyone that is condemning you, but you're certainly not going to be condemned by me for what you just said, because it means you seriously need help. And from my experience as a deliverance minister, when people start speaking publicly about their weaknesses, it means you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. It means you really do need help. So if you're struggling with, with, with that spirit you just mentioned, I don't necessarily want to say it aloud, in, even though you said it yourself, uh, I will, it would be a total honor to stand with you. That's what we're here to do, to bring, bring deliverance to our brothers and sisters, people who really need help. But I just want to um, encourage you. Yes, sir. Yes. The pain came back. What's happening? Tell me. You see, that's the thing about it. So that's a good example. So you got rid of the pain, but the pain is back. What did you do for the pain to come back? Because remember, this must be maintained. That's one thing that I'm, I'm about to teach on quickly. I have a bit of time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on it. You must maintain it. When you get your healing and your deliverance, who is your gatekeeper? Who did you leave at the front door? Because if you got the ill and delivered and you went back to the same things, the pain will come back and sometimes worse. But if you, if you put God as your gatekeeper, Jesus Christ as your gatekeeper, everything that comes to you or, or tries to access you, must first go through him and what if i tell you it's impossible for any demonic force to go through jesus christ it's impossible for anything that is demonic to penetrate infiltrate go through jesus christ it's just not possible but as i said it's something that it perplexes me i don't know what's happening but you see people constantly bringing people into the fold and the churches are fluctuating because people getting baptized, ain't nobody getting delivered. You see, I think they forget it. They said, Bob, <laughs> Jesus understood perfectly what deliverance was, but for some reason we lost it. There you go, sir. That's it. You adopt those principles. They work every time. Not sometime. Those are the principles he gave me. I've never heard them before. Those are the principles he gave me. They work. The principles, so Facebook can know. Acknowledge, reject and renounce, confront, and replace. When you confront, you're using the Holy Ghost fire. You're using the name of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, I hear people say, the blood of Jesus. My people perish for lack of knowledge. The blood of Jesus is indeed against you, but is it the blood of Jesus for casting out spirits. I just want to have somebody on Facebook and on Periscope. I, I want your response, please. Is the blood of Jesus for casting spirits out? So the blood of Jesus, I hear no here on Periscope. Anyone on Facebook want to give me an answer? Do you use the blood of Jesus to, uh, do you use the blood of Jesus to cast demons out? Come on, somebody talk to me. I'm open. All right. There you go. You use the fire. You use. Yes. Yeah. So the blood of Jesus is for redemption. So it's not like we're saying don't use the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is paramount, important. If it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ, then none of us would have been redeemed. 
there you go, you do need the Holy Ghost. But you know what? The Holy Ghost, even when you say the name of Jesus, is the Holy Ghost that's doing this. Let me tell you what. Every action oh, you can't hear. Can anybody else? Is anybody else? Bless you, bless you. Welcome, bless, welcome, woman of God. Is there anybody else that's struggling to hear me? The woman of God says she can't hear me. I hope you can know. All right, so check this out. No matter what you use, the blood, the name, whatever you use, the operation is always the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is not the one that is physically unseating these, these demons. It's always the Holy Spirit. There's something I don't know if you were, you were, you were thought, taught this in any way. Who, what, does, what part does Jesus Christ play? And what part does the Holy Spirit play? What part does the Father play? The Father represents the government. The, uh, the, the government, when he speaks, the king, the volume, is it is it up or down? Why, can you hear me? Oh, the devil is a liar. I'm not sure what is happening, but I think... Oh, man. There you go. Can you guys hear me on Periscope? Let me know. Because I think the enemy is by no stone. What would cause this? All right. I tell you this. <laughs> Sorry about that on Facebook. The enemy is fighting this. They genuinely don't even want it. The enemy don't want me doing this. But guess what? There's nothing he's going to do to stop it. So he might as well accept it, right? But we're talking about, I was answering some questions here. Bear with me for a second. I'm trying to go back live again on, on Periscope because I, I had to stop the broadcast. Um, the enemy will do everything to stop us from actually taking this word out. But just keep me covered and keep me in prayer, right? Here we go. Let's see. All right, that's good. So, I know the enemy is trying to stop it, but we will, we will continue to push on and we will win this one. We will win 100% win. Yes, I'm hoping you guys can hear me now on Periscope. Let me know quickly. I don't know what actually stopped that in the first place because um, it was working just fine. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, give me a yes. Let me know if you can hear me. Okay, so let's go back. Oh, you can hear. That's good. The enemy doesn't want me to teach this because, you see, if, you, if, 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 if this is taught, then it simply means then you can administer deliverance to yourself and others. You, can, you, can, you know exactly what to do to tear down these demonic strongholds. But yes, so we are saying that it's not good enough for you to just be baptized. Baptism is, all right, are you just born of the water? Are you born of the spirit and the blood? Hmm? Have you been baptized in the fire? Have you been purified by fire? Because the purification of the fire is deliverance. And if you've been purified by the fire, it changes absolutely everything. Have you been purified by fire? I know you put your hand up and you made some kind of decree and you said that uh, you're now a Christian and they said if you die tonight, yes, fair enough. But my question is, now that you've given your life to him, what about getting deliverance? What about being delivered? What about getting to know God for real? Get out of the superficial, get into the real. Bless you, woman of God, welcome. I can tell you from personal experience that I have seen, I personally have been through a deliverance since I have been a Christian. Even as an apostle, I go to, um, through a deliverance. I don't know if you, um, I don't know if you guys um, understand that apostles need deliverance too. I don't know if you think that we are some superman or superwoman just sitting in a corner that only go, uh, uh, only being sent. Let me tell you something. Peter was busy walking with Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ still rebuked that spirit from him. You might have overlooked it if you did not read it deep enough. When Peter was promising that, no, you will not die, I'll die for you, I'll die with you. Jesus said, sit and the Lord rebuke you. 
What did he do? That was a deliverance. You just didn't realize it. Was he calling Peter um, Satan? Was it Peter that was talking? Because according to Jesus Christ, it wasn't Peter that was talking, but it was the demon that was talking, the devil that was talking. I, I, before I move on, I want to make sure that you understand this point. Does anybody else see or understand what I'm talking about? Here on Facebook, on Periscope, if you understand, there you go, you understand. I want to make sure you understand this before moving on. But understand that deliverance is nothing to be ashamed of. Now, when you're, there you go, he spoke directly to the spirit. Exactly so. That's the way it works. So if Jesus is there showing you example that a deliverance is necessary, why would you think you don't need to be delivered? And why would I think? As a matter of fact, forget what the public knows about you or me. You know what you know about yourself. You know the thoughts that come to your mind. You know the things that the enemy has been tempting you with. You know your secret sins that you don't tell anyone about. Why do you think so many great men of God, and I use the word great, are constantly being caught out and being exposed and being damaged? Well, you know what? If you... Deliverance is not just reciting. The question is, let me just, um, say on Facebook, man of God asks, how do you get a deliverance? A deliverance is a confrontation, an eviction. So you come in and you use the authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ with the power of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost and seats. Now, this is something I started saying before and I want to finish it. Uh, every action of the Godhead is done by the Holy Spirit. The Father, it comes from the mouth of the Father. The word that comes from his mouth is, 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 is the Son, the authority, and the power is through the Holy Spirit. They had, you see, you will see this getting done even in Genesis. I was teaching on this just a few days ago. It said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, you see, if you don't read as deep as I do, when they say God, you just think God the Father. But when he said, God created the heavens and the earth. It means God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and without form. And the Spirit of God, so there's something that the Holy Spirit showed me that you guys maybe have seen or not seen. But the first part of the Godhead to be recognized in the entire Bible, in case you thought he only came on the day of Pentecost, is the Holy Spirit. In the beginning in God, that's not one that's not one identity of the Godhead um, or one character because it's only one God. Let me make that clear. But it means the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and without form. And the Spirit of God, that's the first part of the Godhead to be identified. And that's the Holy Spirit was over and over the sur surface of the deep. Second part of the Godhead to be identified is when he spoke. And you know that everyone, who does the speaking? The Father does the speaking and the word proceeds from his mouth. So when God said, it was the Father that was speaking. And when he said it, the word that came from his mouth is the Son. What you don't know is that the Holy Spirit is the active part of the Godhead. Whatever the Father says is the word. And whatever is pronounced through the word is taken care of by the Holy Spirit. He's the one, when he said, let there be light, he was the one that made light. The Father spoke it, meaning the Father used the word and the Holy Spirit brought it into existence. But if that's too deep for you, let me know. I'm hoping it's not. But... Just so you understand that the Holy Spirit is, there's no, you could say the blood of Jesus and it's still the Holy Spirit that's been used. You say the name of Jesus because the name, the word, is the authority. But somebody must enforce that authority and the enforcer is the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you don't, you say you don't understand, please let me know what you don't understand because one thing I don't believe in is leaving anyone um, that doesn't understand um, what's been spoken of. Everything that is done, the Holy Spirit does what the Father says. Thank you, woman of God. This is what 
Jesus said. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. Just so you understand, let me tie this in. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. But he said, when I go, I will, the, um, the Father will send the Comforter. And he will not speak of himself, but whatever the Father says, he will do. These, the Bible is coded. And most people just read the Bible straightforward. If you don't understand and you don't read through the Spirit, you will miss it. He says, whatever the Father says that he will do. In other words, whatever is done in my name, that the Holy Spirit will do. Sounds crazy, right? Let me explain to you. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father is the, is, is, is the Son. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Therefore, it is clear, I'm hoping to everyone who's a Christian, that Jesus is the Word. That means everything the Father... Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. So every word that comes from the mouth of the Father is Jesus. And every action of the word is the Holy Spirit. When you understand that, it changes everything. So even when you're saying the fire of God, it's the Holy Spirit. When you're saying the Holy Ghost fire, you're using the Holy Spirit. When you say it in the name of Jesus, you're still using the Holy Spirit. Every demonstration of power is done through the Holy Spirit. So no matter what you use, you know the Holy Spirit will never be. Because sometimes people think they're interchangeable. Like, oh, I don't feel like using the Holy Spirit right now. I'm going to use the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus only has impact or is effective when, you're, when it's used through the Holy Spirit or by the Holy Spirit. The name of Jesus without the Holy Spirit might just be Jesus from Brazil or from uh, Jesus from... Um, there's a country in, in, in Europe. There you go. Because what is power? The power is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That's it. What is the word? Or what is authority? Because that's what people mix up. Authority is the manifestation of the word. Power is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The authority that is in the name of Jesus is demonstrated by the holy spirit that's the best way i can find to say it the authority that is in the name of jesus so sometimes people are thinking mm, is, the, is, is the holy spirit different from power it's not that it's different when you use your, the holy spirit power is one of the attributes of the holy spirit so you can't use an attribute to determine you i am not my finger my finger is a part of me so he is the fire but he is not the fire Meaning fire, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> um, he is the fire, he is the flood, he is the rain, he is so many different attributes that it's impossible for you to pinpoint and say, oh, the fire is the Holy Spirit. You know, the fire is an attribute of the Holy Spirit. So when you understand that, it changes absolutely everything. It's important you know the difference because if you don't know the difference, then you're going to go in and think that, mm, if I feel the wind and I don't feel the fire, then I don't. I don't feel the Holy Spirit. He is the wind. He is the fire. He is the rain. Every might, every authority is Jesus. When you're looking for the demonstration of might and power, it's the Holy Spirit. Father is the government. He is the one that commissions all things. He is the government. The word, and by what authority does the Father administer his commission? Through the name of Jesus. The son. Who is it that goes out and fulfills his request by power? Bless you. There you go. But the manifestation, they're right, man of God, 100% right. The manifestation of the word is the Holy Spirit. So it's one God just manifested different ways. In, in, in. The Father is the government. So therefore, He's the one that sends out all the decrees. He's the one that says, Let there be light. But by what authority can he say, let there be light? By the authority that of the word, which is his son. Then, after you have sat back, relax as the king and say, let there be, and you have the authority that is in the name of your son, the question is, or the statement is, someone or something still needs to go out and make sure that you're not just speaking empty. There you go. Because the Father is the government of all. So when he speaks, he has, where does he get his authority from? His authority is in the word. Then once he speaks that word, then that word still needs to, need to be enforced. 
that word, in other words, let me use this. The police force is commissioned by the government. But then the authority is in their hotel or the badge or whatever they're doing. But a policeman with authority must enforce it. What do you use to enforce? They have been given cuffs and pepper sprays or a gun or whatever they have been given, depending on country. Your authority must be enforced by power. When you understand that, then that answers everything. Your authority must be enforced by power. If your authority is enforced by power, it makes all the difference. You will understand the difference. How do you enforce your power without your authority without power? So there is no replacing the Holy Spirit. There is no like, oh, is it Jesus or the Holy Spirit? It's always Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father. There, there's never gonna be an occasion where you are listening to the Father speak, but then he's saying, I don't need the sun right now, I don't need the word. The word, today's your day off. Today is only for the government. No, that's not what the government does. The government is the is the one that gives the decrees but the decrees must be carried out when he speaks everything that comes from his mouth is his authority the word and the holy spirit is the enforcer the powerhouse the one that goes out and makes sure that everything what do you think his word does not go back to him void think about it it's right there in front of you his word will never go back to him void because every word that comes from his mouth will be enforced by the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you don't know this, you might think the Spirit and the power is different. Now, what, what, why would he say the Holy Spirit and, it, and, and with power? It means the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of the word is the authority. The manifestation, never without the other. As a matter of fact, one without the other is no God because it's one God. So therefore, you're right. It's impossible, in perfect union. But I'm hoping that we all have this clear. I wanted to make this clear, understand that even when you say the blood of Jesus, you're still using the Holy Spirit. When you say that, that when you said the name of Jesus, you're still using the Holy Spirit. You will. There is no way around the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, you can't even get to God without the Holy Spirit. You're wasting your time trying to get with Him if you're bypassing the Holy Spirit. So God is the Spirit, and those that worship Him you must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You cannot over overlook, you cannot override, you cannot bypass the Holy Spirit. I remember a few years ago I was praying on the Holy Spirit. Um, as a matter of fact, I was right here in Michigan too. And I had known this before, but then he started showing me this. He said, why do you go straight to heaven, approaching the Father in the name of the Son, bypassing your ride? <laughs> How do you get to heaven? without the only source that will give you access to heaven, to the spiritual, the Holy Spirit. We treat the Holy Spirit as just some, oh, you, we, we think he's like a, what do you call it? Um, like, you know when you're going in, you're going for your, your main meal, so you're having like something to eat before you go to the main meal. So the Holy Spirit is just a quick warm up and then we're gonna go into the main meal. That's not the way it's meant. The Holy Spirit, it's it's like it's like the sauce and all and everything mixed together. There is no dividing one for another. It's, it's virtually impossible for you to make it to heaven without going through the Holy Spirit. Virtually impossible. When you know this, it changes absolutely everything. You know what? I can see that I'm getting comments, but I can't see what is being said. For some reason, I don't know. But guess what? invite a few more people in but i just wanted to let you know that um you don't need to be in a position there you go i can see it now yes sir sir mike it's it's it's, it's good to see you in i i didn't even see there was so much comments there i'm sorry guys my screen was totally blocked off but when you understand this people trying to bypass the holy spirit some people saying it's jesus some people saying it's the father <laughs> yes, sir. I can assure you, whenever high school, my connections go crazy. Everybody who knows me knows that you're about to. Um, but that's what I've been doing for the last few years. There's a few of my mentees here on Periscope, on, on Facebook, 
So connect with me if you're interested in knowing more or if you're interested in fellowship and let me know. But let me tell you what. When you understand the difference in the operation, then it makes it, it, it does everything. You don't ever need to sit back, relax. I see people. Do you know one of the most stressful things that I have ever seen? I have literally watched. All right, so there's a good question on Facebook. Now that I can see what's happening on Facebook, I can respond. I thought Facebook was being quiet, but they're not. I just wasn't seeing what was happening. So this is what woman of God said. Some Christians don't know if they have the Holy Spirit or not. Now, there's a misinterpretation of what the Holy Spirit is. People think that the only attribute of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. So therefore, if you don't speak in tongues yet, then they think they don't have the Holy Spirit. I am telling you 100% categorically that that is not so. I believe you should speak in tongues, by the way. Let me make that clear before, you, before the tongue speakers like myself start rebuking me. I believe you should speak in tongues. That's not what I'm saying. I'm only letting you know that before I spoke in tongues, even for the first time, I was busy casting demons out and I was busy going in trance and I was busy listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Tongue does something to your Christian walk, so I recommend everybody should be speaking in tongues. Every Christian should be speaking in tongues. But when you have the Holy Spirit and you're and, and, and you're in power, you know. Honestly, that's the only thing I can say. There's no guess. When the Holy Spirit is in your life, you know. I don't know which other way to put it. If I knew the difference when the Holy Spirit was in me. We're not talking about superficial and surface now. We're not talking about being in a position where all you're doing is, um, as a matter of fact, I, some people think the Holy Spirit is, uh, look, the hair on my hand has stood up. It might just be cold, I don't know. But the fact is, if that's your evidence of the Holy Spirit, shame on you. That's my personal, genuine opinion. If that's your evidence of the Holy Spirit, come on in, let me tell you what the Holy Spirit is. Speak to God like you're speaking to, some, speaking to someone you really admire and love. If I tell you how, well, I've told a lot of you guys this already, but I'll tell you some more. What brought me to this stage? I am a curious, curious, curious guy. I ask questions. How can this be happening? Why are Christians dying from cancer when they said it, it killed death in the flesh? Am I the only one? Do I have any Christian here that wondering why the church is so sick? Come on. Everybody else was talking to me on Facebook when I couldn't see. Talk to me on Facebook so I can see now. And uh, talk to me on Periscope also. I'll try and, and switch over and talk to, um, to both pages. Am I the only one that wonder why so much sicknesses and diseases are in the church? Well, it's not me. So Sister Vanessa sees the same thing too. Or wonder the same thing. Why is the church so sick? Why is the church so broke? <laughs> you don't want to hear it. I'm not about to preach no, no prosperity gospel like you see in some stations, but I do preach prosperity for Christians. I don't teach ripping off, but I teach prosperity. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. There's no way under the sun we should be going through all these struggles. I know what I'm talking about. When I gave my life to God, I went for four months where money was in my account every single day. Now, I don't mean like one day. I panicked. I went to the. I went. Was in London. Went down to Nationwide and asked them. I don't know what's happening. Do you see anything irregular happening on my account? They went on check. No, Mister Simmons, we don't see anything irregular happening with your account. So I said, you know what? I'm going to watch this until I get my bank statements. And for that month, that first month, I was getting money every day, the same amount every day, but it never showed on my bank account, bank statements. Then the next month, the same thing, and the next month, the same thing, and the next month, the same thing. So what am I saying? I know what it's like to walk in the supernatural and understand and be provided for supernaturally. So now when I read the story of the raven feeding Elijah, it doesn't seem far-fetched to me because guess what? It wasn't a raven, but the ATM was feeding me for four months. So therefore, I know that this is real. When you read that... Jesus transfigured, and you hear these accounts of men talking to seeing angels and speaking to Jesus. 
I believe because I've had these encounters. What am I trying to say to you? Christianity is bigger than the surface that it has been presented to you on. There you go. By his wounds we are healed, but everybody died. I don't understand. I just didn't want to be a part of that church. I'm just going to tell you the truth now. That was my big, 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 big problem. I don't want to be a part of that church. Everybody dying. Everybody's sick. I don't want to be a part of this church. What can I do? What can I do to get this right? There you go. I, I, I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm so behind on the, on, the, on, the, on the discussion. I thought you guys weren't even saying nothing. But there you go. The presence of the Holy Spirit doesn't go in some of these, these churches. And that's the problem. But you know what? So, all right, so everywhere I go, there's witnesses. There you go. You don't know the authority you have and how to use it. That is the problem. So, you see, if you're talking about, Sir Mike, you've seen demons, sir. You need to talk to me. Because so you guys are, if you're not on Facebook, you don't know who I'm talking about. So, Mr. Job Peter. I served, I served for years in the British Army with this man. This man was one of my best friends for years. And hopefully we get a chance to reconnect. But let me tell you, sir, that's what, that's what your friend is doing for a living right now. That's what your friend is doing for a living right now. Your friend spent time casting out demons. Your friend, your friend spent time commanding the sick to be healed and they must be healed. Your friend spent time commanding the sicknesses and diseases to go and it must go. It's an understanding. That's the reason why I'm teaching the principles because you see, if you don't know the principles, then what I have seen in the churches is trial and error. They say, where's the fire? Where's the power? Maybe go ask that question because I'm wondering the same thing. Where's the fire? Where's the power? Everyone need a personal connection with God. Everyone need a personal connection with God. You're 100% right. I totally um, agree with that. So it's you know it's um it's like something changed, sir. I can tell you that because you know me from you know me from before. Something changed. What changed was that I had an encounter. But when I met God, as a matter of fact, I know I've told this story many times, but I enjoy telling it because you know what? I believe that my testimony should bring deliverance to somebody else. When you're in a position where, you know, you are like wondering, what's this? I was always wondering from I was young. As a matter of fact, I was never willing. If my, I, if my siblings are still here or anyone that knew me before can tell you, I was that odd son, that odd kid in my family's house. What do I mean? They, at one point, as a matter of fact, I thought I forfeited the right to power and salvation. I'm just going to keep it real. Didn't feel no fire, didn't feel no wind, didn't feel no nothing. I saw, I saw, I saw siblings speaking in tongues, walking in power, and I was like, this skipped me. This must have skipped me. Yes. I thought, I thought to myself, this one skipped me. Because everybody had seemed to know God but me. I, 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 I heard of him. I grew up hearing about him. I grew up in a Christian home, and people was busy praying. Matter of fact, when they were praying, I was either spectating or, 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 or falling asleep. But there was something that I can remember as young as 11 years old going to church. There was something I knew that I didn't understand. Now I do. But if my first acknowledged gift was discernment. I could, go around, I could go around a pastor and he would be preaching. He doesn't have to be shouting. He doesn't have to be hooping, no nothing. And there was something in him I could feel. And I, was, I could tell if he was real or not. Not based on what he was saying, there was something unseen, unspoken, that I could not explain. And I realized that, mm, something about this man, something about this woman, I don't know what it is, I can't explain it, there's, no, there's nothing in the physical that I can use, you're gonna, you know what I'm saying? But I could tell the difference. Bless you, sir, bless you, welcome. But I could tell the difference. You know what? Yes, we can do impartations, woman of God, but let me tell you what it is with impartation. Tell you a secret. That's one of the things, too, that's happening in the church that is, is a mess. 
always all right i'm going to ask a question on periscope and i'm going to ask a question on facebook and i guarantee you the guys who know who are part of my mentorship they will tell you what do i recommend before anything else all right i'm going to i'm going to tell you oh bless you woman of god bless you welcome this is this is my my process that i recommend in christianity oh yes he's real my god he is real uh, 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 you guys been around me you know he's real when you can stand thousands and and thousands of miles away and speak to someone and say i command everything that is in your body that is not like god to go and they start vomiting let me tell you something hollywood doesn't have enough budget to do what we do what we see from thousands of miles around the world and just command to to be done in pakistan india in in uh, in, in in the caribbean all over america all over europe all over the world all over north america and it's real it's real. Yes, I'm going to do. I'm going to go there, woman of God. But I'm talking about the responsibility of importations. Let me tell you what I mean. Importations is not for everybody. Did I insult anyone? I hope I didn't, because I don't mean to. I'm just teaching you if you want to be taught. Importation is not for everybody. You don't just import. That's a new phase I see happening in America that I've never seen in my life. Oh, you need a deliverance, woman of God. Take my email address, please. Some one of the family members, please give this woman of God the guidance so she can actually find me. Importation is not for everybody. Let me explain something to you. Sometimes people think um, it's not an insult. And I hope you guys. There you go. Indeed, Mr. Simmons, it's a relationship with God. You have to understand, and he just he just beat me to it because that's what I was going to say. What I teach my mentees is this. You receive salvation by giving your life. You need a deliverance. You need a relationship. I want to tell you something with many of my family members here in terms of my covenanted family. I will tell you that when they came, they wanted to be in a position where what, what, what did they want? Thank you very much. What did they want? They wanted a word because that's a common thing. Apostle, give me a word. Apostle, give me a word. Apostle, give me a word. When they were new to my mentorship, I'd give them a word. As soon as they come in and they start settling in, not one word for you unless the Holy Spirit says your life is in danger. You're thinking, that's selfish. Why? Because people who seek a word don't grow. 25 years later, you're still seeking a word. Now, I don't know if there's anyone here periscope who want to testify to that that i refuse you a word teach you how to receive a word yourself from god i know these people are qualified to give others words there you go bless you man of god bless you you see the thing is because of the way i was saved i don't have the, the luxury of not telling the truth i don't have the luxury of not telling the truth i see people do you know what used to mess me up I used to see people going in, prophesy, 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 prophesy. I am literally there watching that person's life a mess. And I watch men of God, women of God, they're prophesying their car and house. And that person is suicidal. That person is demon possessed. That person needs help. And you are busy talking about a house. What house? He's going to be dead. So no house is going to be any benefit. What house? She's going to be dead. So what, what house is going to help? So then I'm saying... Before you go in and keep prophesying, 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 do what the Lord says. Make sure they're prospering as their soul prosper. So before I talk about your car, what state is your, your, your soul in, your mind? That's my main priority. We'll get to the car later. Because a madman can't drive no car. No mad woman can't drive no car. What do I mean by mad? You might, be, you might not have been... You might have not been declared clinically insane, but you're spiritually insane when you have not been delivered. You can tell anybody I said that. You might not have been decreed or declared clinically insane, but you're spiritually insane when you have not been delivered. So then you see people going in and they said, uh, they tell you all these things, you're excited. I see your promotion coming. So my question is, do you only see the good things 
Because I'm about to tell you the mess that's in your life too and I'm about to tell you why. I am not here to put you down. I am not here to destroy you. I am here to protect the real you. The real you is your spirit man, your soul man. Forget this. We will all put this down eventually. But if I don't tell you the truth, guess what's going to happen? I will be held accountable. You're going to be in a position where you move on. Bless you, man of God. Um, welcome, sir. Welcome, prophet. Be in a position where instead of actually bringing deliverance, all you're doing is bringing. There you go. There you go. There you go. I am there. And I'm watching someone. Like, let me just ask this publicly. I'm going to ask publicly on Facebook and I'm going to ask publicly on Periscope. For anybody that knows me. Do I even ask you when you're messing up or do I tell you? Like anybody on Periscope. Have I ever come in and asked you no know, questions? Like, oh, why are you doing this? I tell you what you're doing. Because by the t when you tell me these things, I know. I don't ask questions. But I want to ask. I want, I, I want proof public proof is there any, any family member here do do you come in and see me asking questions do you see us struggling to cast demons out the problem is people have perverted prophecy that's my problem prophecy has been perverted and it hurts me because what was meant to edify is no <laughs> it's almost magic don't worry, keep on doing your mess because the prophet is going to give you a word. To, you know, it's an abomination. So you come in. No one tell you that, listen to me, that's not your husband, stop it. That's not your wife, stop it. Hey, I want you to prosper as your soul prosper. You prospering without, you prospering without your soul prospering is, is, is you know. And that's what's happening right now. No, 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 man of God. It's not borderland witchcraft. Call it as it is. I'm going to give you a chance to, to, to take off the borderline and put it back on. It's not borderland witchcraft. It's witchcraft. Understand the problem. We have made the men and women of God into soothsayers. So now, do you know when ministry became easy for me was when I didn't feel the need to give you a word. When you're a young minister and you're hearing from God, there's always this pressure that you must have a word, you must have a word, you must have a word. And I remember how it was going. Bless you, thank you very much. That's it, that's it. So, it's like you're in a position, right? And I remember being, going through this a conference and I spoke to my brother and he said, listen, don't feel, don't feel pressure than giving any word. Just say what God tells you to say. I don't feel the need to tell everybody in the room what the Lord is saying about you. If he's not telling me nothing about you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not about to tell you nothing. When God knows he can trust you with a word, when he, will, when he will shut up when he's not speaking, then you will walk and talk accurately. What do I mean? When I give a word, it's never a question because I am sure that it's not my word because I don't feel obligated to give a word. What do I mean? I don't feel like I need to come in and, uh, you know what, there's 50 people here, there's 1,000 people here, there's 5,000, 10 million, it doesn't matter, and they're expecting a word. And then you turn, turn men of God into liars because they feel like they must give you a word. It has become a business indeed, sir. You feel like you must give a word because the people are depending on you to give a word. So my question is, are you going to be like, are you going to be like David? Are you going to be like Saul? Are you going to, are you going to please the people? Let me tell you a secret. Why I hear so accurately. If you don't know me, then you don't know how accurately I hear. If you don't know me, then you, don't, you will not know how accurately I see. Now, does it mean perfection? Far from. But let me tell you what I live by. If I don't hear anything, I won't tell you anything. Yes, sir, if God says so. Feel no pressure to give a word because somebody's depending on it. Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all things will be added. Why am I so into deliverance? I'm into deliverance. Bless you, sir. Why am I so into deliverance? Because a prophesied word is no good to you 
if you have not been delivered. Because there's a secret to the spiritual that we must identify. You're walking with parallel destinies. Your carnal, and your, your carnal and your divine destiny are walking side by side at all times. Woman of God, you want a deliverance? As uh, I, I hope you got the, not the, the email. Contact me, please. Your, par your parallel destinies walking side by side at all times. That's what somebody, um, um, the great injustice that he saw, princes walking and um, regulars driving chariots. What do you think he was talking about? They are prophets right now that is in a pub somewhere drunk, laid out, vomiting on himself. So crazy. They are, I'm going to say this and you might not understand, but I'll break it down if you don't. They are prophets, real men of God that were called. Prophets or prophetess, evangelists, apostles. They are killers, rapers, thieves. I'm telling you what I know. If You, you, you might not believe it. Killers. Rapers, thieves, some have died without ever walking in their destiny. Some are presently incarcerated. Some of them are drunkards, prostitutes, gays, lesbians, name it. If you don't understand, say, Apostle, what do you mean? But don't just dismiss what I'm saying because I know for a fact I'm right. If you think that because he called you to be this, then you will be that. To be a prophet, then you, you'll walk in the office of, of being a prophet. You're mistaken. If you think that your title is enough to give you access, you are mistaken. You see, Paul was an apostle. Not just an apostle, but one of the, one of the most famous apostles. But Paul said, lest I preach people in and me myself be a castaway. In other words, your ministry does not give you a guarantee to heaven. As soon as you know that, is better. You think because I call myself an apostle, that means I'm going to heaven? I need to do the same thing you're doing. I need to seek righteousness and holiness just like you. I need to make sure that what I do please God just like you. Everybody needs to go. Therefore, let every man work out their salvation with fear and trembling. You need to do it. I need to do it. Doesn't matter if you're an apostle, super apostle, super prophet, bigger than everybody else. You're going to hell if you don't live in righteousness and holiness. Your title can do absolutely nothing for you when it comes to making it to heaven or to hell. And that is the reason why everybody needs a deliverance. Everybody needs a deliverance. People come on in and they think it's an offense when you say you need a deliverance. Everybody needs a deliverance. Everybody needs to have that real true connection with God. I genuinely believe if you spend your entire Christian life in the church, just going to church, Anna, Anna, Anna. If you just go to church on a Monday or whenever you go, there's something else I want to teach, but it's not the right time. I don't know if you, your religion might reject me, but if you know some things you have told me, then I'll tell you, I'll show you another one. And another time I'll teach you that one. But let me tell you this. None is exempt. None. Bless me, Father, because I have sinned. So Father can do absolutely nothing for you. Father need blessing himself. You don't know. You're going to ask me, or you say, what's that one they do in the Catholic Church? Oh, Mary is full of grace. Pray for me or something. Mary need prayer too. Mary had to pray just like me and like you. Do you think that Mary can grant you access to heaven? Do you think that Gabriel or Michael or anybody can grant you access to heaven? It's an individual one-on-one. -on -one. You, better, you better know God for yourself. If you really believe, if you really believe that what you're doing is going to get you to heaven, your religious aspect can't. Everybody needs a deliverance. When you get this, it changes everything. You're not offended by it. Everybody needs a deliverance. When you get this, then you don't think that I need one and you don't. Now, let me tell you a secret why you never see pastors getting, well, real men of God who understand spiritual principles are women of God. The reason why you don't see them getting deliverance publicly is, there you go, 
There you go. So I want to ask a question. Why don't you ever see an apostle, well, a, a deliverance apostle getting a deliverance publicly? Somebody answer me on Facebook. Somebody answer me in, 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 in Periscope. Why is it? Bless you, sir. Thank you. Yes, indeed, your house needs to be clean, but that's a good one. So your house needs to be clean. But how do we keep it clean? What's stopping me from vomiting publicly when I'm telling you? Because you guys know what I'm talking about. You've been in this deliverance class for months. So when I say get out and you see people vomiting, what stops you? There you go. You do self-deliverance. You don't go on the stage to clean your shoe when the spotlight is on you. You clean your shoe at home. Nobody else can see when you're cleaning it. So therefore, when you're cleaning it, nobody needs to then stop and think to, to themselves, what is he doing? Is he, is he vomiting? What Do you know, even though in the eyes of God, yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. Though in the eyes of God, the eyes of God, everybody needs a deliverance. It's not just a person's faith, but that's a good one. Let me tell you exactly what it is. I do my deliverance privately. I clean my house daily. So I don't have a, a, a spiritual stronghold. A spiritual stronghold is the manifestation you see when it's happening. Yes, nobody is above deliverance. This is the secret I have heard. I said, fix the problems that kept you off the stage before going on the stage. And for if you're in the movie business, they said, put on your makeup before going live. Don't put on your makeup while you're live. <laughs> don't clean your house while the guests are there clean your house before you have the guests i'm hoping that i'm talking parables but i hope you understand what i'm saying when you do this it changes absolutely everything now i don't know if there's anyone here on facebook or on periscope who would like to come in and join us in the uh, in, in our in our mentorship program it is for free we we fellowship like a few days a week and you come in and you have a family who can keep you covered you pray for me i pray for you we we, we keep each other covered right but so as i was saying to the woman of god it's not that i don't believe in impartation but you must know who you're imparting into and you must know because you can't put new wine in old wine skin that's something that I have been seeing happening in, 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 in uh, am I the only one that has seen this new thing that is hitting this nation in America by storm where you see people coming in and they're getting activated. I don't even know where that started. No, I don't care who criticized me. The, the God I serve has given me permission to speak about it and I will. Am I the only one that I've seen this thing where people are getting activated like a, like a credit card? <laughs> or like, I don't know what it is, but people getting activated. People paying money, going to a conference, getting activated. I am telling you, it's not biblical. I say this under the function of the Holy Ghost. When you go into, when you go in a hall with 2,500 more people or thousands or hundreds or whatever you want to be there with, 50 people, you don't know who's there with you. In the history of the Bible, have you ever seen an activation done like that? I've never seen it. I can understand if somebody who's serving under your ministry, or even if you're a stranger and going into a, a city, and the Lord permits you to activate a, um, someone, but you're just randomly taking a fee so you can activate, that's voodoo, witchcraft. I say that with no apologies because the Holy Spirit is going to bring it's going to bring conviction to people who are doing these things, going around, activating. Who are you activating? I'm going to say something. I don't care who is angry at me when I say it. I'm just going to keep it real. In my experience, everybody I've seen gone for the activation, in two months or so, they're worse. If you're struggling with one thing, you're struggling with five things now because you just went to a house with other people struggling with other things and you just picked up everything they're struggling with because you thought you could be activated. I'm telling you what I have seen with my own eyes. This activation doesn't work. It doesn't work. 
you would have been better off spending some time locking yourself in the closet praying to be activated by the Holy Spirit instead of paying someone to activate you, giving you more demons than you had before you went there. You went there lying, now you're stealing. You went there lying and stealing and now you're a murderer. Because you picked up all these spirits in this room because it's a mess. Activate what? What are you what are you activating? What are you activating? Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit said to me, and that's the reason why it is so sad. He said to me, son, he said, Bar Jesus was trying to buy it. It's not of God. Yes, sir, you're right. It's not of God. You see, if you remember when this 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 sorcerer was actually trying to buy it, and I think it was either Paul or Peter. If I was if I'm correct, it's Peter. It might be Paul. You guys can correct me. But he said, because you thought that the Spirit of God was for sale, you shall go blind for three days. And what offended the Holy Spirit in the holding days, the Holy Spirit son, hope, the Holy Spirit said, Son, open your eyes and look. Because what these disciples or apostles were offended about, the disciples and apostles now are selling it. They're selling it. Activation. What are you activating? You don't need to take my word for it. Go get your activation and see what's going to happen to you in the next two, three months. I have seen it. You cannot buy the anointing. It's right there in the Bible. Somebody tried to buy it and they were cursed and blinded for three days. He gave his life to God. In other words, he went from trying to be activated to actually doing going and doing it the right way. Now you go in here and guys are saying prophetic activation. Not everybody been called to be a prophet. So how can everybody be activated as a prophet? Don't you see that this is witchcraft? Prophetic activation. They can, they can, they can condemn me if they want. I know what I know. Thank God no one activated me. The Holy Spirit did. I have people who believe in me as a man of God and I never try to make myself the source. They're here publicly, they can, they can vouch for that. Every time they come to me, I point them back to the source. I say, no man is your source. God is your source. This is what the Lord told me why I am so humbled. I try to be. He said, it doesn't call individuals, he call forerunners in this modern time. I said, what do you mean? He said to me, what I've taught you is your job to go teach somebody else. What people are doing in the church right now, they have a gift, they keep it to themselves like a secret manual, look in it, tell you something, and have you coming back like a junkie all the time for them. to them. They're never teaching you what to do to be delivered, never teaching you what to do to be set free. So they've made themselves your God, having you coming to them all the time. Yes, there you go. How okay, can any man activate any man? The only thing they're going to activate in you is demons. So instead of being set free, you found yourself going in there, suffering with one thing, and now you're suffering with a host of things. Hmm. When I actually started paying attention to this, it changed absolutely everything. The Holy Spirit said to me, to have nothing to do with them. Don't go close to them. He said, I'm about to bring them down. And if you go, you will be brought down when they're coming down too. For me personally, I started running. You see, Bolt has nothing on me. I've made enough mistake in my life. I didn't intend to go into church and play the fool there. So therefore, mm, you can keep that. I don't need you to activate me. That's it. Activating what? You need a credit card. What's your balance? <laughs> Tell you. Leaving there, you still can't cast no demon out. Coming out with the spirit of divination. So you hear something and you see something and you think you're a prophet. No, you're not no prophet. The spirit of divination can give you insight also. You better know it. That's the reason why the witches can tell you things and the, and, and the warlocks can tell you things and the mediums can tell you things because the spirit of divination has insight. But do not mix up or do not mistake 
the spirit of divination for the spirit of prophecy totally different totally different and when we understand that it changes everything having demons prophesying over your life mama mama shama shama whatever that is shamai shamai i don't know putting their demonic hand on your head you leave out feeling good and coming out with a migraine, all of a sudden you've never felt like suicide in your life. You feel like you want to kill yourself now. You've never been, you've never been, you went in and your wife that you once loved, you can't stand her now. She can't stand you. All of a sudden, all hell breaking loose in your life because you just, you activated something, all right, but it's certainly not the Holy Spirit. Do you know what I call those places? Trading centers. Oh, and nice to meet you. There you go. Beware of the spirit of divination. I call those places trading centers. No, no joke. The trading centers simple because you go in and think, oh, what do you have? Oh, I have lies. Oh, what do you have? Oh, I'm a thief. You, here you go. Nice to meet you. You can take my lie. You can take my, my, my stealing. So you leave out now. You came in with one habit. You went out with many. Never felt like smoking in your life, but someone who was smoking just came and gave you the spirit, the spirit of smoking. You go in and there's a hitch you need to scratch because you need that. You need to smoke. You never felt like a murderer before, but now you went in. So they're activating you without even. All right, I could understand, and I still wouldn't have agreed anyway. If they first had a deliverance session before the attempted activation, but there is no deliverance mentioned anywhere. Just activate. At least, even the banks, you must put a, a, an application in for credit card. But these are the only credit cards getting activated with no application. No credit check, no nothing. Picking up somebody else's demon. That's exactly what it is. So it is a spiritual activation, but it's certainly not no, 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 Holy Spirit activation prophetic activation that means if i can activate you your prophetic or pathetic is that a, is that the way you pronounce it somebody pronounced that word it, 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 it's it's what are, what are you really activating in case you think i am bashing it is because i am <laughs> the interest rate is always high what are you activating There you go, exactly so. You understand that the woman of God. That's why I don't know how people determine who should be activated and who shouldn't. Activate what? Don't put your hands on me. Don't touch me. Don't prophesy over me. If you know me and the fire I carry, then if he even opened his mouth, I'm going to say, I forbid you to speak in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to say, get out of him. And that one who's sticking his hand out to activate if I be a man of God, will stop in his tracks and vomit that demon out. I guarantee it. Touch me. Put your hands on me. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Stop, stop trying to seek power and seek God. Because the mistake you're making is if you seek power, you find the devil. But if you seek God, you get power. Everything you want is in God, but God is not in everything you want. Everything that you need, everything that is there to enhance you, to make you better, is in God. Why am I going to seek power when the Holy Ghost is power? So all I need to seek is God. Seek the Holy Spirit, relationship with Him. I tell my family members all the time, sometimes you will come in and the Lord will say to me, this man of God is a prophet, this woman of God is a prophet, whatever. I'm just giving you an example. And I say nothing to you. Many family members here will tell you. If they come in and they say to me, Apostle, what, what's my calling? I say, don't worry about your calling. Focus on your relationship. Calling without relationship perverts. But relationship I, I, displays your calling or identifies your calling. You don't need to seek your calling seek relationship there you go when i've got it and, and there's many more here that knows that i ain't telling you nothing about no calling calling is not important i have been interested long enough to see people who who were once drug dealers and guys on the street and all that being told they were a prophet and within one week 
he's a full-fledged prophet, no deliverance, no nothing. No one can talk to him. So his very destiny was destroyed because his identity was prematurely exposed. If you're a prophet, I don't need to tell you that because those he foreknew, he predestined. Prophets are not ordained, they were born. Apostles were not ordained, they were born. If you understand that, then you know that whatever capacity God has called you to, he has placed that in, your in you before your mother knew your father. 7.35, thank you very much. We have a bit of time. Before your mom knew your dad, God placed that in you. So my question is then, why would you think you're in a position where you can now go in and you need to know who you are now? Are you having an identity crisis? If I tell you you're a prophet, what's that going to do for you right now? Now, let's clarify this. Am I trying to prevent telling you you're a prophet because I am jealous of who you are? You better know I'm not. I'm telling you what tried and tested. I've, I was not told I was an apostle. My motive for being a Christian was not an apostle. I made mistakes. I wanted God. And I was like, I will take God in any capacity. What pastor? What apostle? What usher? I was giving a usher. Let me tell you what I did in the church. And I have people here that is coming from CLFM, my brother's church, I can tell you. I packed the chairs up. I did ministry of music. Wasn't very good at it. But I, 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 I did ministry of music, meaning... I was doing the sound engineer when, you, when your mic starts squeaking. That was because I wasn't doing a very good job and I would be trying to get it right. If you wanted the chairs packed up, I packed them up. To, I take the speakers out and put them back in and I reach church before everybody else so I can pack the chairs out. And then when church was over, I was one of the last ones to leave because I had to put the chairs back. But people think that in order for you to be a great apostle, Bless you, bless you, welcome. Then you need to go in and you need to be lording it over everybody else. <laughs> it's a too many churches are selling prophets and apostleship. You talk it like a joke, sir. That's a fact. But I did not desire to call myself no apostle. Number one, let me tell you that. Let me make that clear right now. I have no interest in being a pastor. No interest in being an apostle. If you're like me and you have you have uh, assessed yourself and you you have examined yourself and you realize you've made some stupid mistakes, then the only thing you wanted was acceptation from acceptance from God. Please accept me. I clean the toilets if you want me to clean them. I I, I sweep the church. Give me the Hoovers. I'll go I'll go Hoover that church. I'll I'll pick the rubbish up. I'll do whatever. Because I didn't see myself highly. I just wanted redemption. Redemption was my only thing I was seeking. But in seeking redemption, in seeking relationship, welcome, welcome. It's, it's great to have you. By seeking redemption, by seeking redem relationship, trust me, something happened. All of a sudden, this God that was only of the Bible now become the God of my life. Start talking to me. I have seen angels. I see angels like I'm looking at myself in the screen. I hear him talk to me as clearly as I'm talking to you simply because I realized it was him that I needed. I was, I was desperate for him. I did not join the church to be no pastor. But when I was supposed to be ordained as a pastor, every time the pastor said, Pastor. Now the apostle said pastor. The Holy Spirit said apostle. Nothing that I do I asked for. Never did I ever think I was going to be operating at this capacity. I don't take it for granted. But I think God chooses the degenerates and the ones who have made mistakes. I say that with not lightly. Because guys like me can take absolutely no credit when you walk in power. Because for all those who knew me before were thinking, is that Paul? When God has done a lot in your life, you can take absolutely no credit for what he is doing. Because you know for a fact, it is God. Therefore, you can, others can be there acting all excited, apostle, apostle, apostle. 
but there are some who don't see apostles. There are some who know Paul. And those that know Paul know how far I have come. Those that know Paul and not the Apostle Paul know for a fact. Mm, is he the biggest fake in the world or something genuinely happened in his life? Well, I'm here to tell you now, something genuinely happened in my life. And I did not seek being an apostle. Because if you see yourself as being qualified as a prophet and apostle, it's an indicator that you're not qualified as a prophet as an, and, and as an apostle. Sounds bad, but I'm just keeping it real if you want to know the truth. If you think, yes, sir, indeed, is your calling. And I respect you for that. Bless you. Bless you, woman of God. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> sir Mike, really, you knew that I would be this person someday? Well, you know what? To God be the glory. You saw more in me than I saw in myself. <laughs> To God be the glory. So for the guys who are on Periscope, I'm talking to my friend. Served with this man for years in the British Armed Forces. We were friends for years. Yes, sir. You're right. You're right. You're right. Sir, sir, sir. Sir Mike. Everybody say job. I'm going to call you by the name I know. What about, um, I'd love you to come on in, even for a visit. If you have any space on your phone, download Zoom. Download it, trust me. I'd love you to come on in. I'd love you to come on in. You might not be able to come all the time, but come on in and get to know the family. Download Zoom, create an account, and send me your account detail, and I'll add you, I'll add you to, the, to the, the, the group. Now, for anybody else who's interested, bless you, Sister Tracy. Welcome. Download Zoom. Download Zoom. Create an account, and we will add you in so we can fellowship together. What I know, I'll teach you. What you know, you can teach me, and we can share the knowledge because this knowledge is not meant to be kept to yourself. You know, but I am telling you that. Sorry, I just missed it. I read some. God gave you a gift, but you have a gift of prophecy. Could you please put that on screen again so I can actually read it? I'm sorry. So we have about uh, 10 more minutes, and then, or just over 10 minutes, and then we're going over into the Zoom room. Bless you, man of God from Atlanta. I'm hoping you're enjoying this. Uh, you're enjoying the fellowship today, sir. Bless you. I salute you. Yes, so, what changed me? You're busy asking for, you're busy asking for power. Not realizing that if you seek power and not God, you get witchcraft. Bless you, woman of God, welcome. If you seek power and not seek God, what you receive is div divination, witchcraft. No joke. Bless you, sir. Thank you. Somebody write that down. Or somebody take this. If you seek power and not seek God, you get divination, you get witchcraft. That's it. There's something the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, any gift that is not yielded unto him is yielded to the devil and therefore is witchcraft. Simple. But I did not seek to be an apostle. I did not seek to be a prophet. I wanted God. So when they ask you what you want, be like Samuel. Be so innocent that even when God calls you, somebody needs to tell you he is calling. There you go. There you go. Never make, never become so ambitious that, <laughs> what's the main thing? There you go, there you go. Seek relationship. Power will follow. These signs will follow them that believe. There's an abomination taking place in the church. Bless you, man of God. Bless you. 
there's a thing that is taking place in the church, and this is it. I see Christians following signs and wonders. Never seen that in my life. It's a crazy thing. When the word clearly says, these signs will follow them that believe, them that believe are busy following these signs. <laughs> I don't know who started that trend, but it's something to laugh about. The word says, these signs will follow them that believe. Why are you busy following these signs? But the thing about it, your gifts are not something you can give. The question is, if God gives you the gift of prophecy, is it right for you to give it to others? No. The question you should ask is this. The gifts are God's. The, uh, the gifts are without repentance. Let's keep it real first. That means, if you play the fool and you have a gift, God won't take His gift from you. There's an appointed time for everything, an appointed date for judgment. So until the day of judgment comes, you will still continue to do what you're doing. There is such a thing as false signs and wonders, but the question is, how do you then differentiate between false, false signs and wonders? Number one, let me explain something to you. We're not talking about magic tricks. So this is a question that was asked here on Periscope. Is there such a thing as false signs and wonders? I'd say yes. I say yes. There you go. You are not the source of your gift. Exactly so. Yes, so yeah, it's a gift. It's a gift. There is such a thing as false signs and wonders. You cannot use... Now, this is what is killing us. If you don't have... If you don't have a relationship with God, you can be fooled by absolutely anybody with a bit of... An, 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 they call it antric, sleight of hand. You can be fooled. If you are busy seeking... Somebody who has done psychology could fish and you can give them information and they can tell you that information and you can put your hands in the ear, cry and say, you got a prophecy. Hmm. You need to understand that the only way, there you go, there you go, the only way you can actually recognize the things of God is by God, through God, through the Holy Spirit. If you think that your five senses is, is, is big enough for you to recognize spiritual things are, are accurate things from Christ, you're mistaken. I have been in position where people are... I had a friend, a good friend of mine as a matter of fact. This man of God are my friend I love, my good friend. He was speaking in tongues. I was a young convert. I was like there with people who are held and been there for a long time. And this guy, remember, I said he's my friend, not my enemy. He started speaking in tongues and I felt, and I felt myself. They, they, but, but you said the devil can be accurate. The devil will tell you what, what is fear, false evidence. False evidence is still evidence, right? Fabricated evidence is still evidence. So it's not that he's accurate, he's fabricating. But let me tell you this. I was there with my friend, started speaking in tongues. He was speaking in tongues, my good friend. So let's keep this real long. And, amen, amen. My friend started speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. And I found myself getting annoyed. There you go. I found myself getting annoyed at my friend, who I have a lot of love for, respect for. And I was like thinking to myself, what on God hurt is this? Why am I getting so annoyed at this guy? He was speaking in tongues and there was a room full of people. They said, speak Lord, speak Lord. So me in my naive young state in Christianity, while they're there saying, speak Lord, put my head down, bring it. Father, please forgive me. If there's anything in me that is not like you, please take it out and replace it with your Holy Spirit. Because I'm there thinking something must be wrong with me because my friend, you see the me? Something is either in me or in him. There you go. But I'm there, and my friend, every time he speaks in tongues, I'm annoyed. Something in me does not want to allow him to speak. 
But I, I didn't I didn't think it was him that something was wrong with. Let me keep it real. I thought it was me. So I started praying. I started repenting. I started asking for forgiveness. I tell you something, man of God, it's bigger than the sound. It's in the spirit. Let me tell you why I said it's in the spirit. You can't use the a hear. I've also taught the opposite. I saw someone that was in the spirit, casting out a spirit right here in Michigan. And I remember in my flesh, I was like, what on God hurt is he doing? This guy sounds like he needs a deliverance. And the Holy Spirit said to me, don't you dare, that is me. And I didn't know the sound I was hearing was not something that was native to me. I've never heard that sound before. So in my head, I was thinking, that's demonic. But he said, no, that's me. And I watched that guy made that, he was making that, those weird sounds. And I watched those weird sounds administer deliverance to a young lady that was there. So therefore, there is no accurate way of determining good or evil in the flesh. Only the spirit. He can disguise himself as the angel of light. If it were possible, underline the word, if it were possible, the statement I should say, even the very elect would be deceived. That means, you know, there you go. Now you're saying it. If you stay in his presence, you can tell because let me finish this story, this, this, uh, this story because I'm coming to an end. We have like eight minutes. When I was there and my friend was speaking in tongues and it was acting, I felt weird. He's on my right, and I'm like praying. If there's anything in me that's not like God, please take it out, replace it with your Holy Spirit. Father, I repent for everything I have done in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm assuming it's me because obviously there's like 10 of us in the room and everybody else is speaking in tongues along with him. Thank you, Jesus. Speak, sweet Holy Spirit. And then I'm here getting annoyed at my friend. Don't want him to say a word. Don't want to hear anything he has to say. So I assume it was me. Then we stood up to close the session. And as we stood up to close, I was holding on to one lady's hand on the right, on the left, and my friend's hand on the, on the right. And I don't know when I let go of, my, of the lady on my left um, hand. But I was holding on to my friend with both hands by the time I found myself. Something weird and strange for the first time happened to me. My mouth was moving, but I was conscious it wasn't me. I was speaking a language, but I was conscious it wasn't me. But the Holy Spirit, which I know now, at that point, I wouldn't say the Holy Spirit, but the Spirit was talking in me to the Spirit in him. And the Spirit in him was responding. I don't know if he know what he was saying, but I didn't know what I was saying. I'm, I'm just going to keep it real. And as I started talking to him, he laughed. He gave, a, he gave a cheeky laugh. And I felt this holy hand go hit me. And I was like, the only way I can express it is like, oh, dear, you laugh. That's the only way I can express it. And I grabbed onto his, his, his uh, to one hand. And then I grab on to the next hand and I put my hand on his belly and I started speaking in an aggressive language that I don't know. And I heard that thing that was in him stop talking in that language and spoke in English and he said, please stop. I'm going to leave him. I'm going to leave him. Now think about this. That's the only thing that gave me any kind of validation that day because when I started going up and holding on to my friend, everybody that was, was looking at me like I was weird like i was envious of him speaking in tongues everybody looked at me as as if i was weird as if i was trying to start something in the room now remember i said the guy is my friend he's not my enemy good friend but the holy spirit was against something that was in him and when i set that fire to him i listen i listened to the demon the holy spirit would have him to do this so i i would i would be validated there you go, authentic, overpowering fake. And when I said, I didn't even tell him to get out, but I know that with the language I was speaking was a spiritual language, and he said, please, stop. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. And everybody, when, he, when I said, then go now in the name of Jesus Christ, I sent you the fire, and it went. Then my friend started speaking in tongues. And my spirit rejoiced with his spirit because we are on the same page. You can never use flesh to assess spirit you can never go to no school to learn this because no school is qualified the only school you can go to is the heavenly school the holy ghost college if you don't go in with god then you will be deceived you will call good evil and evil good so i want to encourage you now that you have answered your calling be delivered
I'm about to go. I have five minutes. I'm not going to wait because I'm going to have to go live on Zoom. There you go for wrestling not against flesh and blood. But if there's anyone here that would like to be in contact with us, let me know. Please take our email address. Take our email address. Thank you very much, woman of God. I'm about to go. Take our email address. Come on in. Come and fellowship with us in the name of Jesus Christ. For everybody here on Periscope, it's a total pleasure to have you. God bless you. Welcome. Anyone that is on Facebook, it's a total pleasure to have you here. God bless you. Welcome. Um, sometimes you guys might be wondering. Greetings, greetings. Bless you. Bless you, woman of God. Welcome. Okay, woman of God, go to your phone or your computer. I salute you, sir. Bless you. Thank you very much. And this is the next thing. When you guys hear me say I salute, it's because the Holy Spirit said to me, soldiers should be salutes, should be saluted. I'm ex-military, so I understand. So when I come in, what do I say? I say, man of God, I salute you. Woman of God, I salute you. Now, if Mr. Mike is here still, then he will know that that salute was an American salute. But the British salute, I salute you. So I give you the American and the British salute. But beyond, above all, I give you the heavenly salute. I salute you in the name of Jesus Christ. So, but I will say to you, oh, my email. There you go. Thank you, woman of God. You're way ahead of me. Download Zoom. As a matter of fact, anybody who would like to join us tonight, do it quickly because in a few minutes we're going to be going live. The, the, the beauty about Zoom is simply this. I'm sorry you did, woman of God. It's a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, if you're working, then you're camera can be off but otherwise it's an interactive session you see right now i'm looking at my screen reading your responses but i can't see you and i can't hear you but on zoom no we're going to be having a meeting on zoom that's where we do our deliverance sessions that's what we do our teaching tonight we're going to be as a matter of fact this might draw you in tonight what are we going to be teaching on we are going to be talk, be, teach, be talking on the things that paul spoke about the attire the, the correct attire. We're going to be talking about the correct attire for the church. Is it a sin for a woman to go with her head uncovered? Is it a sin for a woman to wear a, a, a pants? It's going to be absolutely dynamite. I'm hoping you guys will come on in and join us because we're going to be going over right now in three minutes and it's going to be dynamite. Now, if you all want a few minutes to download Zoom, if there's anybody here that would like to join us tonight, let me know. Just let me know on Facebook and let me know on Periscope, and we will make provisions that while we go on, we'll be adding you in. But trust me, we have an Holy Ghost time. We Things that we're talking about on Facebook and Periscope, we demonstrate in Zoom. And we teach others how to walk in the same authority. So if there's anyone, uh i tell you what it is send it to your messenger how am i going to do it um can somebody send sister bell this thing on, on, on zoom just download zoom on your phone or on your computer z-o-o-m or z-o-o-m same thing then create an account or you'd like to join or you already have zoom then just send me an email at um man of god and uh as a matter of fact if i go live if uh, I might go live and I might invite a few people in off um, Periscope on Facebook. I don't know if it's possible to go live on Zoom while I'm actually here, but I'll keep I'll keep it going for a few minutes. Come on in, share the discussion. There you go. But if you already have Zoom, take my email address and just add me as a contact, or I can give you the Zoom code. We are about to go live, so if you have not gotten it, send me an email at, there it is, it's on the screen. Somebody put, put it on the screen here as well, on Periscope. Contact me, come on in, join, and let's have this discussion. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. Our discussions are always brilliant, as a matter of fact. But come on in and join us. It's not a dictatorship either, so we are going to be going in. We, one thing I will say to you before you do come in, your opinion will not count. Neither will mine. This is what we use to authenticate everything we do. 
So don't come in and don't be offended if we don't listen to your personal opinion of what mama told you and papa told you. I heard something from mama and papa too, but if mama and papa word doesn't line up with this word, then mm, I'm sorry, mama and papa word is invalid. So I hope you guys understand what I'm saying, but come on in and join us for everyone who is, um, who wants to be in. I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to go on Facebook, so my final salute, and I'm about to go on Periscope. Now, before I go on Periscope, it's 8 o'clock, so I'm going to shut down on Facebook because it's on my laptop. But for anyone who's on Facebook that would like to join us, you have the email address. Download Zoom and come on in. I'm going to go live now on Periscope and on Zoom, and I can invite a few people over from Periscope. God bless you on Facebook. I'm going to stay for about another minute or so on, on, on Periscope. Hope to see you guys over. Send me an email if you can't get in so I can join you in, add you into the room. God bless you.